This frequently overlooked camera has all of the specs and ability to stand toe to toe with the very popular Fujifilm X106, which due to its popularity is incredibly hard to get hold of at the moment even if you can afford the hefty asking price of $1,600. Meanwhile though, this camera can be found in abundance on the second hand market and even when you buy it with a similarly spec lens like this, the combined price is almost half that of the Fuji. So what exactly is it, why is it so cheap and why aren't more people talking about it? Well this is the Panasonic Lumix GX9 and it's a micro four thirds mirrorless camera that was released a little over six years ago and that does help to partially explain why these things are the price they are and why they have somewhat slipped into obscurity. But don't let its age fool you, inside this camera it's packed to the rafters with a pretty impressive set of features that really do make it a fantastic option to consider for anyone looking to purchase a relatively small and portable camera. So how much will this camera set you back? Well at the time of making this video at least you can buy a GX9 body on MPB for around $740 in good condition. Or if you'd prefer to spend a little bit more to get one in excellent condition then they're closer to the $870 mark. But of course the Fujifilm X106 comes with a built-in 23mm lens so what about the cost of buying glass with it too? Well one of the key benefits of opting for a mirrorless camera like this instead of one of Fujifilm's premium compacts is that you're not stuck to using one single focal length. You can literally pick whatever kind of lens you want. And with this being a micro four thirds camera there is an extensive range of lenses to pick from. But for the context of this video and considering we're talking about this camera as being a potential alternative to the Fujifilm X106 I've gone ahead and picked this Panasonic Lumix 20mm f1.7 prime nice. lens because once you consider the two times crop factor this offers a full frame equivalent field of view of 40mm which is close enough to the 35mm equivalent offered by the Fuji. Plus being a pancake lens it does maintain that slim profile file just like the lens on the Fujifilm camera but this lens has the slight benefit of having a wider maximum aperture of f1.7 compared to f2 on the X106. Now currently this lens is selling for between $170 and $195 depending of course on the condition which means it's entirely plausible to buy this camera and lens combo for a little over $900. Okay so we've already established that in terms of price at least this is significantly better value but how does it stand up to the Fuji in terms of build and specs. Well just in terms of design obviously both of these cameras adopt that classic rangefinder styling which personally I'm a big fan of. The grip on this camera is a very similar shape and depth to that of the Fujifilm and both feel equally solid in the hand when shooting. I mean even the size and weight of these two cameras is incredibly closely matched. They both have a large three inch tiltable touchscreen on the back albeit the Fuji is a touch higher resolution and above that there's a built-in electronic viewfinder. Now although the EVF on this GX9 isn't the fancy optical hybrid design like we've seen on the Fujifilm X106, it does still have a rather nifty trick up its sleeve. Personally I actually think this periscope design gives this camera an edge over the Fujifilm in terms of practicality at least because it allows for much easier shooting at lower angles but ultimately there is no wrong choice here because whichever one you want to go for will ultimately boil down to your own personal preference. Also on top there's a hot shoe port and a pop-up flash next to that and then right at the end there's a neatly arranged cluster of dials including a mode dial, two command dials and a dedicated exposure compensation dial. On the bottom there's a single SD card slot situated right next to the battery but unlike the Fuji this door isn't easily blocked by a tripod plate. Plus rather neatly Lumix have added this little flap here onto the hatch which means that if you're using a dummy battery that plugs directly into the mains you can run the cable straight through the battery door without having to keep it permanently open which is pretty cool. Now on the back of the camera you've probably already spotted that this GX9 has considerably more shortcut buttons allowing quick access to things like ISO, white balance, drive modes and things like that. Though sadly for me at least there isn't a joystick on the back of this camera for quickly moving around the active AF point like there is on the X100 which is a bit of a shame. This instead has to be done by either touching the screen or by pressing left followed by down on the d-pad and then using the d-pad controls to move around the AF point which to me feels a little bit like you're entering a cheat code on a Sega console or something and although this wouldn't be my first choice in truth both of them are fine alternatives once you get used to them. But what about on the inside? Does this GX9 really have what it takes to compete with a brand new Fujifilm camera? Well look I'm not going to sit here and pretend that this GX9 offers completely like for like specs with the X106 because let's not forget there's a six year gap between these two cameras being released. But honestly considering that age difference the gap between them really isn't all that huge and this camera is certainly more than capable of handling itself. Starting with the 
sensor, obviously this has a smaller 20 megapixel four thirds chip compared to Fuji's latest and greatest 40 megapixel APS-C size sensor. But as you'll see a little bit later on, size isn't always everything. And although this Lumix might have a tiddler, it can still certainly win a pissing contest if you get what I mean. Now, this four thirds sensor benefits from five axis IBIS, offering four stops of stabilization, which isn't all that far off the six stops of stabilization offered by its rival. This IBIS is particularly handy for video capture, which this camera is also pretty adept in, offering 4K video capture up to 30 frames per second. Again, it's not quite the 6.2K video offered by the Fuji, but still perfectly capable by today's standards. Though one thing to note is that although there is a micro HDMI for attaching a monitor, there's no mic or headphone port on this camera, so you'd likely need to rely on an external mounted audio capture and monitor system should you require professional quality audio for your videos. But what about the photography side of things? Because ultimately, I would wager that the main reason why people are going to be buying the Fuji X100 is for the photography. Well, just like the Fuji, this GX9 has a proper mechanical shutter that tops out at 1 4,000th of a second, but can be further extended to 1 16,000th of a second if you are willing to switch over to the electronic shutter. In high speed burst mode, this can capture snaps up to 9 frames per second, which again isn't that far off the 11 FPS top speed of the X106. Now, although this camera uses a contrast detect autofocus system as opposed to face detect AF, which is usually the favourite choice these days of camera manufacturers, the AF on this camera is actually pretty fast and more than dependable in most situations. Granted, it does become a little bit more prone to hunting in video mode. Now, obviously, this camera isn't going to benefit from any of the current AI driven tracking features features as you see on most modern releases these days because that has only been available for a couple of years and this is obviously a much older camera but it does at least include the essential face and eye detect options as well as basic subject tracking which works well enough so we're on to the big one what about image quality well as you would expect from most lumix cameras this gx9 is more than capable of producing lovely looking images that have plenty of detail the raw files it produces are nice and flexible when editing them in lightroom and that meant that i didn't really have any issues when pulling back details from the highlights and shadows. Ultimately, when you place the final results taken by the Fuji and this Lumix on screen, to me, both of these cameras are able to produce amazing looking images. So whichever one you went for, you really are not going to be disappointed. Although some may consider these 20 megapixel images as a little bit on the low side by today's standards, the reality is that if you're only ever going to use this camera to post images online or create small prints, then you really don't need much more resolution than this. In fact, one of the common criticisms made about the new X106 is that the 40 megapixel sensor felt a little bit overkill. Now personally I kind of sit on the fence with that one but what do you think? Is 20 megapixels not enough or just the right amount? Anyway whilst you're arguing that one out in the comments section I also want to mention at this point that all of the images that you've seen so far on screen have been raw files edited with my Lightroom preset pack. What's more the first 50 people to place an order using the code on screen will get the entire set of seven presets for half price, so don't miss out on that one. Inevitably though, there's one area where this Lumix really cannot compete with its rival, and that's with Fuji's secret weapon film simulation modes. Now, as you may or may not already know, film simulation modes are super popular at the moment, and it's something you can find on all of the Fujifilm cameras, and they basically allow you to create awesome looking images straight out of your camera by somewhat trying to emulate the appearance of classic Fujifilm film stock. And although there are a handful of creative filters available on this GX9, the options are nowhere near as comprehensive as those available to you on the X100 or any Fujifilm camera for that matter. So if this is a feature you really can't live without, then you may just have to wait it out and pick up the Fuji. Ultimately though, although this Lumix may not quite have the same level of sex appeal, it's much more reasonable price point, robust set of features, and the added flexibility of being able to equip different lenses certainly make this GX9 a worthy alternative to consider.